Hey, what's up guys? Blake from Mac Kiteboarding here. And today we're learning a super fun trick, which is the back roll. So this is a game changer when you learn to kite and you're riding up wind, you've got your jumps down. This is like the next step where you're doing a back flip. And from there, possibilities are endless. So really excited to teach you this. So get ready and let's go. So the first step in a back roll is just understanding the kite position as you're going in to do it. Basically, there's many ways you can do a back roll, but for the first one, you want a little lift of the kite. So what you're gonna be doing is sending your kite from 45 degrees up to 12 o'clock. It'll lift you up in the air, and then as you come back down, you're gonna redirect it back to land smoothly, riding downwind. So the back roll, combines a lot of variables with sending the kite, rotating around. It's different than the jump where you're facing your landing. So that's the trickiest part is just flying the kite and keeping it still as you're rotating around like this. I remember as I was learning my first back rolls, didn't have anyone to teach me. It was just going out and trying it. And every time I'd pull on my backhand and I would go one way and then the kite would go the other. So the most important thing here, just keeping your kite straight up at 12, and then going back in the direction that you're landing and not sending it as you're going around to the other side of the wind. You'll stop your rotation and then the kite will go to the edge of the window and you'll fall. So most important thing is understanding the kite and where it needs to be in the wind window, which is going from 45, you're going to the left, up to 12, and then back to the left. You're going to the right, you want it 45, go up to 12, and then as you're coming down, you're gonna pull it back down, pull you into that landing right away. So. Kite position is key. Uh, you don't want to have the kite moving too fast because if it goes up quick, then it usually goes too far over into the wind window. So you want to remember, biggest thing to focus on here as you're doing this trick, just trying to keep the kite right at 12 and not move it too much, which means putting your hands in the middle of the bar, which will make it not move as quickly. If your hands are far on the back and you throw a back roll, it's just naturally going to pull hard on the back hand, going to the other side and then makes the crashes a little bit more interesting. So step number two is to take a slow to moderate speed. Feels like going into a back roll that you'll need a lot of speed, a lot of power, send you up to get enough rotation to get around. But in all honesty, if you take too much speed, what happens is your pop will kind of rip you off your edge. So actually the slower speed, the easier it'll be. It's not really a flip, it's more of a roll. So instead of thinking of doing a back flip, you're more doing a 360 and you're attached here so you're spinning around and so slower is better just take it nice and easy and even if you fall it's easier to fall when you're going slow it's not as consequential so just take a little bit of speed cruise into it you fall a few times you get more comfortable and then you can up the speed a little bit as you go but take it easy don't go into it full speed, send in the kite, because that's where things get a little hairy. This also allows the kite to travel up to 12 o'clock easier, because you're cruising along as the kite goes up, then you have a little bit more time to react. When you're moving fast, everything happens a little bit quicker. So just remember to take it easy, take it slow, work your way up little by little, and then once you get this dialed in slow speeds, then you can take it to high speeds and get that dialed in as well. Step number three is to pop into the wind. You're gonna be doing this as you send your kite. And one thing about sending the kite is that you don't wanna have the bar pulled in as you send it. Because if you pull in on the bar as you send it, it, the kite is catching all of the wind and as it goes up, it's gonna pull you off your edge. So you wanna have the bar sheeted out, steer it up, and as the kite is traveling up, that's when you're gonna start edging into the wind. So you're gonna sheet out, steer up, as it's steering up, the kite's moving, that's when you're gonna move yourself and go into the wind. So that is a very important part of this trick is the timing of the kite being sent as well as you edging into the wind. Because if you send the kite too early and you pop late, then you're not gonna get the height. And if you pop too early and the kite isn't there to catch you or lift you up, then it's not gonna work out right and you're gonna pop without any lift. So. This is one of the other important parts of this trick. It's all about the kite and the pop. 
And then once you get that down, then it kind of all comes together and pulls you around. Of course, then there's the landing part of it, but we'll get to that. As your kite reaches 12 o'clock and you've twisted your shoulders and your body into the wind, that is right as you're gonna pop. What you're gonna do is kite sheeted out, you're sending it up to 12 o'clock, you're edging into the wind right as it reaches 12 o'clock is when you pull in on that bar to give you the lift of the kite and then pull in on your front knee. So you're gonna pull in on the bar and you lift your front knee at the same time while leaning back, which then pops the board out of the water, sending you up into that rotation while the kite lifts you into the air. If you don't pop very much, what happens is the kite will lift you, but your body won't turn as much. So really just leaning back, pulling up on that front knee will initiate the spin and the turn of the back roll to get you following through in that whole rotation rather than a light pop, which then you have to do all the work of like twisting your body around. So sending your shoulders into it allows your body to follow. If you pop but don't twist with your shoulders, what happens is you can start the rotation, but your body is closed and it won't continue around. So it's very important that you twist with your shoulders and your hips, bring your knee to your chest and just keep following through with that until you're all the way back around. Step number four is to spot your landing. So after you've sent the kite, you've initiated your rotation, your pop, brought your knee to your chest, you're gonna be coming around like this. And right about as your back is to the kite is when you're gonna be able to see your landing. And you wanna keep your eyes open for this so you can see where you're going. You wanna just look at the point in the water downwind of you where you're gonna be coming around to. Keep your eyes on that and then that'll pull you into your landing so you get the whole rotation around. If you just go like this and stop looking, then your rotation is gonna stop and you're gonna go onto your back. So just really follow through, spot your landing, look around, get where you're gonna go in your eyes. And then you have a better idea of, as you're coming down, whether you're gonna make it around or not. And if you're not making it around, then you can just kick off your board or send the kite up and just try and pull in to soften the landing and release the bar, whatever is best for the situation. A lot of times just releasing the bar will just dump all the power in the kite and you can just cannonball into the water. Or if your kite's up high, you can just pull in and try and get the kite to lift you up as you come down. But if you spot your landing, you'll have a better idea of what's gonna happen as you're coming down, whether you need to go through with it or bail and try again another time. So spotting your landing is key. Just like any trick, you always wanna see where you're gonna go and when you're gonna land. And closing your eyes is about the worst thing you can do, which is something I used to do when I'd do back rolls because I fell so many times, I just never really knew if I'd landed or not, so close my eyes and just go for it. So keep your eyes open, spot your landing. This will be very important in the process because it's one thing to do a back roll, but it's another thing to land it. If you can spot your landing, you have good chances of uh, getting the board under your feet and riding away. So step number five is to redirect the kite as you come around. So now that you've spotted your landing and you see where you're going into, you're gonna pull back in on your front hand to then send the kite down to pull you into the landing. If you just keep the kite above you, what's gonna happen is that it'll lift you up and your legs will be straight and your body is taken up. So then you're stretched out and it's a lot easier to get off access on this point. So you wanna send the kite down to pull you into the landing rather than stretch you out and drop you down. So just give a little tug on your front hand, which will then send the kite from 12 o'clock into the direction that you wanna go, which then pull you smoothly into your landing and get you able to land with your board underneath you, your shoulders over your knees, point a downwind and ride away. It's very important that you don't lean back as you're landing. If you lean back as you're landing, what can happen is the board's out in front of you, the kite's pulling you forward, so you'll either fall onto your butt or you'll get pulled over your face. So it's very important to send the kite, not pull too hard so that it goes down low. You want it kind of from 12 o'clock to 45, just pull you nicely into the landing, not too much of a pull, but enough to get you in the direction that you need to be going. As you redirect the kite, you wanna get your shoulders over your knees with your body facing downwind. You don't wanna be leaning back too much. 
because you're leaning back and the board's out in front of you and you're not gonna have a clean land. So as you redirect the kite, you want it to kind of pull you forward so that you're stacked over your board. And you wanna bend your knees on impact so that you can absorb the landing and land flat, slightly downwind and ride away. This is the hardest part is landing the trick. Once you get the rotation around, just getting those smooth, clean landings. But the biggest thing is just to remember to redirect your kite and not keep it above you. Just like a jump, keep the kite above you, it can swing you under or it can just drop you out of the sky. So you wanna just give that kite a nice little tug on the bar to get it going in the direction that you wanna ride. Pull you into it nice and smoothly. Get your weight over the board, over your knees. Absorb the landing on impact. Go slightly downwind. Get control again and then ride the other way. Step number six is to untangle your lines. And the reason this happens is that you're making a 360 around the bar. So the kite is staying in one direction and you're spinning around it. So what that does is the steering lines just get crossed over the center lines and it's not a big deal. You can fly the kite still with it like that. So I'd suggest that you get control after your landing, continue riding for just a few seconds, 10, 20 seconds till you feel comfortable. Once you get there, just put the kite up 45 degrees, kind of high. You can just release the bar and then it'll untwist itself or you can give it a little twist, untwist itself. So it's back clear, untangled and grab the bar again pull in and continue riding and go for another back roll. So the other thing that happens when you're doing a lot of back rolls, let's say to the right, is your center lines will get twisted all the way up. So just remember to unspin it at the bar. Most kites nowadays, most kites nowadays have the unswivel where at the bar, above or below the bar, you can untwist it just so that your center lines aren't getting all tangled up to the kite. So that's a important thing it's actually quite an easy step but just something that is part of doing back rolls and especially when you're doing them one direction so hope you guys have a great time out there not too many falls and just remember to have fun with it if you start falling a bunch just take a break go back to some basics just watch another video maybe go out the next session but just have fun enjoy it you know it's never bad to just let go of the bar and cannonball in it's a fun process so I hope you guys enjoy. This takes you to the next level of kiteboarding and we'll have many more videos based off of the back rolls to come. So have a great week. See you next time. Thanks a lot. Adios.